sea scale issues, how the White House is wrong. For those that don't know, the White House recently recommended that everybody should effectively start using Rust or Go or some like garbage collected language slash Rust because that way you can avoid having memory critical bugs. Anyways, there has been a lot of running debate on how Rust should replace C, and recently the White House issued a report urging developers to migrate from unsafe languages like C in favor of safe languages like Rust, triggering a new round of discussions. Absolutely. My general rule of thumb is the the moment the White House recommends something, I immediately now think it's sus. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I should use Rust anymore, okay? First, you got the Rust Foundation doing God knows what. Now Biden's up there telling me I should use Rust. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with this world, okay? Now I'm feeling a little freaked out all of a sudden. Time to dip. I know I'm, I'm dipping. I'm out. I'm like do- just dodging that shit right, out, right left and right. Man, now the White House is not completely wrong. Most programmers using C should use Rust instead. <laughs> yes. Yes. Tell me, have you ever have you ever read a sentence that hit so many strays at the same time? This sentence is so good. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I love this. It's savage. Uh, But that doesn't mean all of them should. My argument is simple. C is superior to Rust in certain scenarios and in the right hands. I love the fact that it's skill issue. It, it, this must be written by a chronically online individual that is absolutely correct. It is a kill issue. Or a skill issue. I said kill because I highlight stupid. I highlighted and I saw kill and then my brain became a brain. Okay, unfortunately, it seems most people are unable to understand my argument. <laughs> Skill issue again. Uh, perhaps due to the human tendency to paint everything with a broad brush. So in this post, I'll explain the argument step by step. So hopefully the nuance is not lost. And with ample examples, so there's no ambiguity. It, there, it might be a bit acoustic in here, okay? I don't know. I, you know, I don't think we got any of that, that sound foam prevention here. All right, anyways, this post is divided into three parts. First, I'll explain my argument. Then I'll address how my argument could be plausible for people that don't think it is. And finally, I'll give examples. Okay, not everyone should be a sniper. Agreed. Let's imagine a team of 10 soldiers all using sniper rifles. Oh, you mean my favorite way to play Halo? Okay, can we just be real here for a second? Maybe every soldier should just come with a sniper rifle. Because that's the only way I want to play Halo. I don't I want to quit playing it. Okay, I, I'm sick and tired of playing it with anything. But, dude, sniper shoddy is the greatest, is the greatest way to play sniper shoddy. Shoddy snipers! It's the best. That sounds horrible. It sounds hilariously fun, okay? Everybody loves shoddy snipers, okay? It's the greatest. Uh, This team probably wouldn't have great results. So shall we conclude that no one should ever use sniper rifles? If you give everyone in the team normal rifles and they perform substantially better, that would lead to simplistic conclusion that normal rifles are better than sniper rifles. Yes, normal rifles are better than sniper rifles in the hands of most people, but that doesn't mean everyone. Let's say uh, Eric is a really good sniper, so his team is reassembled with nine normal rifles and Eric with a sniper rifle. Now the team does substantially better. Uh, with 10 normal uh, riffles. I do got to make one small comment. I love that there's just like this this nice, gentle description of people getting absolutely murdered as a way of being like, ah, now they're better. They're just doing better now. The mixed team uh, did better because it embraced the diversity of human capabilities and the potential sniper rifle has in the right hands. The understanding should not be controversial. The notion of using the right programming language for a particular job is common. You wouldn't use C to run a bunch of programs in a certain sequence. Shell script is better for that. And you wouldn't use JavaScript to write an operating system kernel. Some people are better at JavaScript, others at Ruby, others at PHP, and that's fine. C excels in certain tasks like system programming and low-level libraries. By the way, this is like the greatest. He's making a great reason why you should learn Zig. Honestly, Zig Zig is, might be... if. If I wasn't in my Go arc right now, I think I'd be in a Zig arc. Uh, Rust is probably better than C in other tasks. Say, for example, a graphical widget toolkit, GTK+. So yes, if gra- graphical widget toolkit is written in C, it might make sense to rewrite it in Rust. The same applies to other tasks, perhaps most, but not all. Rust advocates argue that Rust should replace C in all tasks, and this is what I strongly disagree with. They would argue that Rust is inherently safer than C, and it should be used even in systems programming where C is king. I do not disagree that many code bases of system programming using Rust instead of C probably better, but again, not all. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, so far I'm actually, I'm tracking with everything he's saying. Is, does anyone have any disagreements? I have no disagreements so far, which is, I'm sure that there, there's some things that I think C is just nicer at or C++ or any of those kind of things. Sometimes it's nice, it's nice to have a little bit more, you know, a little bit more loosey-goosey. You know what I mean? 
I like Lucy Goosey. If all the currency uh, code were written uh, to be rewritten in Rust, the world would be a better place. Yes, just like if all ten soldiers used normal rifles instead of sniper rifles, the team would be more effective. But that doesn't mean Eric should give up his beloved sniper rifle and use a normal rifle instead, just because everybody else sucks at it. <laughs> yes. 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 It's not my fault that everybody else sucks at it. There will always be a place for C, even if it's 10 times more Rust code, because there will always be people that can make C shine. The basic versus aces. Rust advocates love to share lists of security vulnerabilities found in C code, and they use it as proof that no one can write C code safely. By the way, right now there is actually a Rust unsound compiler bug in which you can cast uh, you can cast uh, lifetimes to static and be able to access memory that is gone right and you can do this safely in rust right now it's not like rust is is completely immune to problems oopsies right let's suppose that most c code is actually unsafe and poorly written following the sniper analogy couldn't it be because nine out of ten c programmers actually suck at it what about eric what about the top one out of ten that are actually exceptional i'm going to call these top 10 percent aces and the bottom 90 percent basics <laughs> I love scale issue articles. Okay, I don't know what it is, but this is also the exact same argument that you hear like when it comes to misusing uh, any technology, right? Anytime someone says, oh, you, you have a complex React app, that's because you just don't know what you're doing. It's just skill issues. Everything is a skill issue. Everything, I'm just a basic bitch trying to write some basic ass programming. And yes, I'm, writ I'm riddled with skill issues, okay? Just, just let my basic bitch self be basic. My argument is that you shouldn't use the performance of the basics as proof that aces should give up C and use Rust instead. Someone with poor understanding of statistics might argue that it's not just the basics. All C code is like that. Not true. If you administer an exam to 10 people and nine of them score one out of 10 while one person scores 10 out of 10, you might conclude that everyone failed because the average is 1.9. But that's not how statistics work. Well, the, the, the median is also one. Have you thought about that one? The did you know that the 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 ninetieth percentile was one? So is mo the mode. So is the mode. Red pilling the nafs. I'm not sure what this word means. This looks German to me. Can some German ass person tell me what the hell that word means? It's naive. Okay, red pilling the naive. If you accept that C aces might exist, then you can move on to the next section where I provide examples of how C aces write significantly different code. If not, the next subsections are meant to open your mind to the possibility that rabbit hole runs deeper than what you might have thought, and thus you make you question what you th think you know, not just C, but statistics and everything. Damn, let's get red-pilled, Neo. Me and you, we're going deep. Let's go. Wee oui, wee, oui, baguette. Baguette. Jama comme t'appelles tu? Je m'appelle. Michel! Uh, the few that carry the team. Okay, in my synthetic example of one exceptional student, the average is not representative. Uh, but surely that doesn't happen in the real world, right? Did you know? Uh, do you know that every open source project, most people are below average number of commits? That's right. Most people are below average. Here's a graph showing the number of commits per contributor to the Linux product, project. <laughs> it's funny. It's a, this is a funny graph. What, what this really says is one person typically holds up a project and the rest don't do nothing. Okay. You know, if he would have used a logarithmic curve, it would have looked really nice. Statistics. Can we all just agree that statistics are pretty fun? Uh, all right. The average is 37.4 commits while the median is three commits. 88% of the contributors have less than 37 commits. That means that 88% are below the average. This, mean, this may run contrary to most people's intuitions, but that's because most people have a only rudimentary knowledge of statistics. This actually runs exactly how I think any open source project should run. Unlike, I mean, that's just because I'm old enough to know that inner source doesn't work and that anytime someone says you should do something specifically this way because everybody at the company can contribute is lying to, lying to you and you're about to do something that you're going to only be the one holding up and that you're going to hate your life. Just saying. <laughs> Unlike what you may have been told in university, most distributions are not normal distributions, uh, but power law distributions, especially when it comes to matters of information. What does it mean? 
it means you probably don't know much, uh, let's see, as much about statistics as you might think you do. And therefore, the conclusions you might have drawn from the overall performance of C programmers might be flawed too. Have you heard of a uh, Pareto pr principle? In proficient, let's see, if proficiency in C followed this distribution, then 20% of programmers would have 80% of the skill sets. Of course, the ratio is not necessarily 80-20. It could be very well 90-10 or 60-40 or anything like that. <laughs> graphs. I'm not exactly sure what this graph is trying to tell me, but there's graphs here, okay? Yes, no, a number of commits is an indication of quality or anything like that. There's the, there, there isn't any indication here. He's just talking about how often does somebody commit to a project, meaning that most people don't commit to a project. Most people have some ancillary set of commits. Well, most people just, well, the individual, a couple individuals pretty much hold up a project, right? That's what that means. Okay, therefore, my example is not far-fetched uh, at all. Reality could be pretty close. Mount Stupid versus Dunning-Kruger uh, effect. This is me. This is my favorite place to be, is Mount Stupid, because everything is amazing and nothing is bad. Can we just all agree that we want to be here? If I could live my life here and be happy forever, ah. Uh, Hey, that's me. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you don't know about this? Do, do, do people not know about this? This is like every learning curve you'll ever go on, right? I remember every time I've learned every technology, you do this. You think it's just amazing. You start using it. You misuse it wrong a bunch of ways. You realize how bad you're using it. It totally sucks. And then all of a sudden, you start learning how to use it better. And then you really like it. This is how it really works all the time. I think there's a loop uh, after the valley. The, sometimes, sometimes it looks more like a learning curve that, that's uh, non-differentiable, but that's different. But then you learn to hate it. Yes, then the, then the hate happens. A lot of people would associate the Dunning-Kruger effect with this graph. And you may be thinking, I bet the author is suggesting I'm peak of Mount Stupid, and I actually don't know much. There's only one problem. Dunning-Kruger ha uh, effect has absolutely nothing to do with this graph. This is the graph that most correctly depicts the Dunning-Kruger effect. It feels bad because I don't understand it, so this makes me feel like I'm stupid. Hurts a little bit. Uh, is this so? So, in other words, is this graph trying to say that most people never learn who they are, and thus they fail the art of war, know yourself, and know your enemy, and win every battle? They just actually don't know themselves or their enemy, and they lose every single time. Is that what this is saying? Yeah, yeah. I would say that. Well, I mean, there's no, there's no lines here, so we don't know like what what the distance is between these two points. There's, this is all relative. But yes, this line tends to be down here, and this line tends to be. Well, they 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 start at the same point, and then the perceived goes up to here, whereas the actual goes like right here. So there's definitely like a nothing to a whole bunch to then it like slowly goes through. And you know what? I've never had a point in my life. I don't think this happens for me. Like the green part, I don't think this is green either. I actually think this is worse than green. In fact, I would color, I would say that this is not as bad as this. And what I mean by that is that if you're really good at something and you perceive yourself as not being good at something, like you're a bigger idiot than someone who thinks they're good at something and they're not. You can't even tell what good is. Somehow that just feels worse. But you do less harm, do you? I say you do more harm because you have the ability to steer the ship, but you think you're too stupid to steer the ship. You're wasting potential. Like, everybody starts here. We, we, we're all this side of the graph. Everybody starts off in the red side. So nobody thinks that's, like, bad. That is called, this is called life. This is called getting experience. And this is really where imposter syndrome sets in. I mean, the problem, imposter syndrome is a completely different topic. Imposter syndrome can be very, in my opinion, can be very simply summed up. You think too much about yourself. There you go. If you think more about the problems you've solved and the things you're working on, you'll have much less time to think about yourself and much less time to gauge other people. And guess what? You'll find that you're, you're more confident at, at solving things. All right. Anyways, but this part, it just means that you have the abilities. You just don't use them. I crazy. Okay. The irony of Dunning-Kruger effect, which suggests that people with poor knowledge on topics overestimate how much they know about the topic, is that people with poor knowledge of the Dunning-Kruger effect overestimate how much they know about the Dunning-Kruger effect. <laughs> Okay, this is this is a great article. I'm loving this. Okay, can we just all agree that this is fantastic? Just for a second, can we all say this is fantastic? I don't know who came up with the Mount Stupid graph above, but they clearly did not read the paper of Jay Kruger and D. Dunning. And most people who mention Dunning-Kruger effect don't do not know 
what it actually is. I misread that, but you got the idea. And the exact same applies to the C language. People with poor knowledge of C overestimate how much they know about C. Fair. I wrote drivers uh, for network cards and flash drivers in C for two years. And I can tell you this, and, and planetary pancake motors and cameras and crap like that. I can tell you right now, I don't know C. As someone who's done a lot of C, I'm not that great at C. We even on this stream, uh, we even on this stream did, uh, I did a test where I thought I could write a linked list in C using only XOR. And we were able to do it, I said in 10 minutes, and it took me like 12 minutes. Okay, it just goes to show that I'm not, I have, and I'm sure there was bugs in it, but somehow I proved that it worked. I know nothing about C, and every time I use C, I always get, I always just feel so much stupider than I think I am. So you basically underestimated yourself? Yeah, I know, I did, cell phoned. Uh, let's see, so you may have heard from a person with decent knowledge of C that it's nearly impossible to write C safe or safe C code, but how would he know if he doesn't even know how much he knows about C? Facts and logic, atheist. All right. Are you starting to see the metacognition problem? Skill issue. My life. This, should, this is going to be on my gravestone. I hope you know that. That when I die, I, I pray that either I get turned into ashes and launched into space or I get a gravestone that says skill issue. Uh, hopefully at this point, I have provided enough examples of statistics and the Dunning-Kruger effects to make you question what you uh, think you know about C might not be accurately represented what you actually know. Wow. I could, sorry. I think I had a stroke. Did I just have a stroke? I think I just had a stroke. Um, you get the idea. <laughs> is it possible that in order to accurately assess how feasible it is to write safe C code, you would need a level of skill that most people simply do not possess fair. By the way, I do have dyslexia, so I really have to try hard. Okay. I'm trying hard here. People don't make fun. Don't make fun of me. Uh, in other words, the ability to assess if there are skill issues in trying to write safe C code is in itself a skill issue. The issue is not solved by relying on the opinion of some respectable member of the industry because they themselves might not know as much as they think they do. And you would not be in a position to figure that out. The problem with this argument in general that I'm kind of hearing is that this argument can be boiled down into a different way. Trust me, bro. Why should I then, then like by the very nature of this argument, I shouldn't trust this guy. So why should I even trust this guy's opinion about this topic if I'm not even sure if he understands this topic, right? The problem with the, the problem with the continuous distrust argument is that then you can just trust nothing, right? Like it just can, it just continuously just eats its own self. It's the snake that never stops eating itself. So it becomes the trust me, bro. He's Eric. I'm not Eric. I can tell you that much. I'm not Eric. This issue is not solved by relying on the opinion of some respectable member of the industry. We already read that. In other words, in order to accurately assess how powerful the sniper rifle can be, you probably should be asking an actual sniper, not somebody who wrongly believes they are a sniper. But how do you know that they are a sniper or not? Even if they're a respectable member of the industry, I don't even know how. Unfortunately, there's no objective way to determine. Okay, he answered my question to determine who's exceptional C programmer and who isn't. You need an exceptional C programmer to tell you that. It's a self-referential problem. If Let's say I could tell you I'm exceptional. I'm an ace who can point you to other aces, but how would you know? And for that matter, how would I know? I could very well be overestimating my uh, own abilities as well. Okay, facts. We're going to just skip on. Okay, here we go. Let's consider the simple example of allocating some memory and assigning some values and doing that uh, and, and something with that. Okay, struct person. We got 50 bytes plus a little injure plus a little pointer to uh, apparently another pointer to itself. All right. Struct person John, uh, struct person, we're going to malloc the size of the person. If John equals null returned, memory issues. Imagine having memory skill issues right now. This guy's so smart, he outsmarted himself. You don't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Sicilian when death's on the line. <laughs> That's just what I had. That's like what I'm thinking about right now. Mem said, size of John, this person, okay. Stir copy, John name, John Doe. John H25, do some stuff, John, free John zero. No, I'm all about free and John. Can we just free John? Stir copy, PTSD, I know. He didn't even use stir and copy. I don't even think this guy's a real programmer, okay? Can we all be real here for a second? The man's over here throwing in stir copy and not stir and copy? Yeah, right. Like, I'm going to trust this guy. He didn't even bounce check. He didn't even bounce check to make sure that John Doe is less than 50 characters, which is the hard-coded amount. Well, what about the assert? Where's the assert? Stir copy's more efficient. Yeah, but he didn't assert, so I don't believe him. He should have had a he should have had a debug build assert, so we know. He doesn't. 
Uh, this is very typical way of writing C code, but right away I can tell that this person who wrote it is not a seasoned developer. Get him. Get dunked on. Uh... Bit hot dog dipped. All right. First of all, size of struct person is unnecessarily verbose, and we can do size of John instead. Okay, that feels like a nitpick, and I didn't know that. A skill issue. Okay, I already have skill issues. Shit. I am already skill issued. I am literally already skill issued, but this does make sense. Right? It, I mean, it does make sense, right? It does make sense. Okay, shut up. Uh, this way, we don't need to specify the type of variable, and if the if the type changes, we don't need to change this code. I, I mean, really, honestly, that's fair. This is really fair. At first, I thought this was the nitpick, but the more I think about it, the more I think this is actually pretty good. Okay. Second, Malik uh, returns a void pointer, uh, and anyone with moderate C knowledge knows that these pointers do not need to be casted. So the line to be cleaned up would be this. <laughs> I mean, it's really... Making me question all my skill issues. Next, John equals null is unnecessarily verbose. Not John is simpler. Is it? I don't know. I've never liked this. So I'm one of those people. So I'm I'm a huge I'm a huge proponent of when I'm in like when I'm in this and I have like uh, const a equals a string. I always go if a dot length equals zero, right? I'm not someone that write uh, if not a dot length, right? I don't like that. I've never been like that. I I, I prefer this way. I understand that it's 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 verbose, but I I am much more of a fan of this than I am of this. And you could even go all the way to if not a, right? If not a is literally equivalent to it, a equal, like length equals zero, right? And so for me, it just conveys a more understanding, or it conveys more intention in my code. So I am someone that likes to convey as much intention. That's not true. It is literally true. When it comes to a string, they're literally equivalent. Okay, don't question me. I know, but, but A is a string, okay? We've already determined it's a string. You're probably using JS doc or TypeScript or something, and it's a string, okay? We're not talking, okay, here. Assert A type of A equals string. There you go. Are you happy? We've asserted it. It's now a string. It's guaranteed to be a string, so shut the hell up about A. Oh, what if A... Uh, atheist, redditeer atheist, what if A is a number? Got him! No one's doing a number here, okay? Shut up. What a stupid argument. We're talking about strings, you dummy. You got him, checkmate, dude. Fucking people. And then we could use the same size of John Trick with Memset. You did a number on him. Oh, assert it. Not inserted. I did not say inserted. Okay. I want you to know I said assert. A cert. Um, call. But it would be much easier if we used calloc instead of malloc. Uh, and then the memory is zeroed at the same time as allocation. Let's go. But that's not the Linux style. The Linux style is straightforward with no nonsense. Struct person name John age 25. Ooh, this is some. What is that? Is that like C11? Shit, is bro using, is that, damn, bro's using C11, isn't he? That's C99? No, it's not. Is it? Didn't this come, isn't this like part of C11? Or 14 or some shit? <laughs> Actually, C20? Yeah, add it to C++ way later. Okay, okay, my bad. I, 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 a lot of my C knowledge comes from me having some inclination as to C++. My bad, my bad, my fault. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Does this do the same as the traditional code? Yes. Traditional trad code. Uh, when the function is called, there's a place in memory for all the information related to this function. And this includes local variables. When the function is exited, the memory is repurposed. This is not even a feature of C. This is a feature of the CPU. C being a low-level language makes the CPU features transparent. So the definition inside a function, we allocate the necessary memory automatically, and you can initialize the memory at the same time. What about zeroing the memory? I didn't set boss member to null, therefore it'll be garbage there, right? No! If you set one member of the structure, all others... Uh, all others members will be zeroed. Oh, I didn't know that. This I actually didn't know. This I actually did not know. That's kind of cool. I didn't realize there was zeroing when you initialize like this. 
Uh, but that's not all. Uh, if we make variables static, then all the memory will be zero, even if we don't initialize anything. But more importantly, the data will be part of the program. So it will be set even before the function is called, thus saving time. If the function is called multiple times, the data would have to be copied over the, uh, to the stack over and over. Now, I could attach assembly code to, of this program with a variable as static versus non-static just to show how much of a difference a single keyword in C makes, but that would probably be too cumbers uh, cumulative too cumulative and cumbersome. Cumulative? Is cumulative even the right word there? Uh, and hopefully, at this point, you are uh, already amenable to my uh, premise that there's orders of magnitude difference between beginner uh, in C and expert. Well, the problem is, again, you can't just toss out static like this because one thing that you're not saying with static is that you can't just static everything because your program will take up as much memory as a JavaScript. You can actually, you can, you can static everything. Guys, we can static, we can static everything. It actually is true. We can static everything. I, I don't. I can't believe that. But it just all you're doing is building programs as big as um, JavaScript, and they'll be super fast. So, my bad. I'm st I'm I'm the stupid one. Uh, to be clear, comparing the assembly code generated by different C codes is not overkill. It's something C experts do regularly. Judo, you're kind of like my C expert in this chat. Judo, do you compare different compilers regularly? Bold words. <laughs> Are those bold words? You do? Okay, you do? I do? Okay. Okay, looks like we got some C experts in here. It sounds like we actually have a litmus test. Litmus. I said litmus. That's like how much of a Dunning-Kruger dummy I have. I am. Okay, I'm like so stupid that I'm not even using the right words trying to sound smart, but I'm not. Litmus test. Lig a ligma test. Um, what's a compiler? <laughs> But okay, I hear you, but what's a compiler? Can we just take a second to address this? Uh, it's what godbolt.org uh, is for. It is what godbolt.org is for. Uh, the Ligma test, dude, I can't wait to have a little bit of Ligma test. I have, du I have dummy Krugers. Uh, let's keep in mind, uh, let's see, with different compiler options and even different compilers, one single line of C code can have tremendous amount of work and be thought behind. Okay, let's keep in mind that this is an absolute most basic example I could think of, and already the difference between a beginner and expert is substantial. Let's keep going. I'm actually excited about this. Okay, so we got a little node data with an int value and a little node with a void pointer to data. Interesting. And the next node. Okay, okay, okay. Classic linked list is what this looks like. I think we can agree. Linked list, linked list, here we go. Uh, list for each, struct node head void, call the next thing with two void pointers, uh, void user data. Okay, okay, struct p head equals that bad boy, while p, <laughs> that's the average stream of mine, next node equals next, if, let's see, call the function with the data and the user data, p equals next. Okay, fair, fair. List free, go here, do the same thing, call this data that you're about to free, free the p, you know, I was taught once you should not free the P. Uh, go to P next. List prepend. Do a little bit of size malloc of this bad boy. If we can't do it, you should really do like some sort of... If you can't malloc a node, you really should do something more than return null. Like, can we all agree that like if you return null... If, if, if you can't malloc anymore, like your program's done. What are you going to do? I mean, I guess you could say if you're managing your own memory and you have your own areas and you try to, like, free it all up, then yeah, maybe. But this is pretty much a panic for the average person. The average person is just effing, effing it all up. All right, we got a little head. We got a new head and some node data. We're going to do a bunch of malics, blah, 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 a lot of return values. We're going to set it all up, and then we're going to for each on the head, and then we're going to we're gonna free the head. We're going to free the head and free the P. Okay, so this is pretty good. Because this code is generic, it'd be... Uh, if we were writing a library, by the way, is anybody here confused about what this code is doing? Right? This is pretty straightforward code. I mean, honestly, this is, besides for this right here, this is pretty much what I would be writing if I were writing C. Like, I'm not that great of a C's, C'smanship. Uh, you're lost. It's, okay. So this is just a callback. The callback simply says, I'm a function that doesn't return anything, and I take two pointers. I take two pointers to I don't know what. A void star literally just means, I don't know, it's something. And the compiler's able to, t the compiler's able to deal with this because void star has the definitive size, whereas what you're pointing at may be anything. That's all it means. It just, it just means any. Literally, void star is any of the, of the 80s. The list iterator implementation is pretty, uh, the list iterator, yeah, that is pretty good. This is a great little function right here, by the way. I'm, I, I think it's pretty cool, right? It, that's all it means. I'm a little confused why the user data gets passed in on each function call, right? Like, I don't really understand that. 
this just seems like it's complicated for no reason. Like to me, it should have been a struct head void function with a single pointer, pointer to the data itself, right? That probably would have made more sense. Context, I know, but why would you need context if you're having that, like you're iterating in place, right? Like look at this, he's even passing in null because it doesn't make much sense. I don't know, that's all I'm saying. Okay, uh, context to the user callback, okay, fair. Fair. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. I'm just saying it's kind of weird. I, I, a little weird. This C code is not good. Okay, this C code is not good. We're about to find out why. Because this code is generic, it uh, like it would be if we were writing a library, the structure where we're going to store our custom data has to be separate from the structure where the generic node information, e.g. next pointer. Therefore, yeah, for those that don't know, like you can't just do a generic, right? You can't go struct node generic T and then next being a pointer to T. You can't do that. This is C dog, okay? You only raw dog, you raw dog your CPU. Okay, we raw dog CPUs around here. Uh, for those that don't know. Uh, yeah, exactly. C dog, you C dog them. Therefore, every time we want to add a new node to the list, we have to do two memory allocations, one for the node and one for the node data. This is cumbersome, but that's how most people would do this task. And for example, that's how it's implemented in glib. <laughs> so what you're trying to say is glib's a bunch of bunch of rookies, a bunch of skill issues. Most people would not bother checking if memory allocation succeeded. They would let it let a segmentation fault happen, which might happen anyway, and that would make the code much simpler. But here I want to show how properly checking these allocations would look like. That's not the Linux style, though. How would C Ace do this? How would a C Ace do this? Did someone just mention C Dog? Yeah, someone did, did mention C Dog. All right, let's find out. We got a, a, a list, an L list head, an L list node, and a node. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to hold, I'm trying to make sense of this. So I get the node. The node is literally a node is just a pointer to the next node. A node contains a pointer to the next node or contains it, it embeds a struct that points to the next node and has an int value. So he did interesting ahead. I'm getting aced so hard. I'm confused at how node even works. Because node points to list node, but list node does not point to any data. First off, what I consider a big faux pas in any data structure implementation is when the head is has a different implementation than the node. I really dislike that, right? And so a node, it's pseudocode, it's not pseudocode. This is code code, okay? This is literal code. So I dislike that. A node is a node, which is a node. That's a node. All right, struct node, this is the part that, okay, so let's look at these defines. Okay, first off, using defines, I think you're just an evil person, just so you know that. Uh, list for each position node. I don't understand why you'd want to do this ever. Can't you just call, can you Can you not tell C to inline a function? Does it just not always inline a function? Is that why? Um, all right, list for each position node. We're going to go over this thing. Position node equals node. I have no idea what's happening here. For type of node, position node, pos, pos equals next. Oh, oh, this is naughty. Wait a second, is this super naughty code? This looks like super naughty code. All right, list safe for each, uh, for type of node, node position equals position, end position, end, okay. Okay, I think this might be super naughty code. I think this is, it's super normal C list code, is it? It feels super naughty. I, I, I dislike when you have half of a statement up here. Uh, let's see, okay, list. L list add, we take the node, we do this head first. Let's see, new node next equals head first. Head first equals new. Hold on. Next equals, next equals the head, Ned, next equals the true head. First equals this. Okay, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Node add, all right. So that was L list add, node add. So we have a separate thing for just the node. I'm confused by that. Why, just why? This feels more confusing. I'm confused at this one. Okay, so we create this structure. I still don't know what this does. Like, honestly, I have no idea what this does. It feels like it's separate from L list. Maybe that's why I don't understand it is that L list is actually completely, is completely, or they, they, st they store the data completely orthogonal to the actual item. I think this is, I think that's what's happening. I think I, again, skill issues. Okay, so I understand what's happening here. Uh, test, we're gonna go through here. We're gonna create a new list. We're gonna calc the list, zero it out. We're gonna add to the list, go to, okay, list experts. Do they use go to's as well? In C cleanup, yes, fuck, damn it. You know, it's like I try to get them and then they say yes. Okay, it's comment, well shit. Then I guess I'm the stupid person.
August, I'm not the ace. Clean up. We're going to go through each list free. Okay, so the problem I have, obviously, with this free list, can I be real here for a second? The thing that I have a problem with this free list is that it's a single instruction. That's all you can put here. So for those that don't realize this, you can't put more than one instruction or one statement in this for loop. So that's why they do it this way. I know, please wrap that. I know, so so that's that's what I was thinking, was there's no curly braces here, so this is a single statement you can with that, yes, but this is not. Like, you can't just do this. You can't just do this. You have to do it, you have to put the little squirrely braces yourself, which feels terrifying. I feel scared, okay? I feel scared. Free the list, return R. I don't know. Okay, so I don't know if I like this better, but maybe this is what – is this what experts use? Is this really – like for those in chat, is this really what people think is really – this is good C? This is good C? Is this good C? Peak performance? Damn, C is hard. Okay, see, I told you I'm not good at C. It's clear that I'm not good at C. It's clear I'm not good at C, okay? It's Tom C. Peak C is a nightmare then. <laughs> I, I can be fr I can be completely fair that I I understand C, but my C professor would have considered that bad practices. Well, I th would assume so too, but I'm being told that I'm wrong. Uh, the first thing uh, to notice is that there aren't multiple allocations. That's because every custom node contains within itself all the generic inf uh, node information. Because the struct L list node uh, element is the first. Element inside the struct, it's by the way, it's linked list for those that don't know what L is. Uh, first element inside the struct node, a variable of type struct that can be accessed by a stru struct list node. At the end of the day, it's just memory, and all the information is there. Second thing to notice is the incredible useful macro list for each. It traverses a list with a for loop, uh, but that is hidden inside the macro. This is syntactic sugar to make life of the users of the library easier. Yeah, I guess, I guess if I always used macros and I was used to this, maybe that would be easier. Maybe that would be the expectation, but the problem is, I guess, since I don't use C like that often, those macros are normal. They are very helpful. Okay, that's what uh, multiple people have said. That okay, I I could buy that as an argument that I'm just simply not used to seeing it, so therefore it looks ugly. There's this whole theory that I have involving this, which is on. There's two sides of what is called developer experience. Okay. Uh, by the way, look at how pretty straight that free line is. Okay, there is like bad DX. Right, bad DX, right? This is where the developer experience is bad. And then there's good DX. And the problem about this is that this entire line is made up. And really what this should be said is, by the way, look at how not straight that line is. This should really be uh, unfamiliar. And this should be familiar. And I find, personally, that all of a sudden, I really like stuff that I thought I hated. Like a good example of this is... Um, is underscore names like foo bar i thought i hated that camel case only i think this is completely inconvenient absolutely the worst to talk about all that kind of stuff but then all of a sudden now i think it's the best and it's the only way we should do things why would you ever use camel case camel case is for rookies and it's stupid right like what happened to my brain at what point did that just happen well it happened some point when using a snake case based language and it's like what I considered bad became good, right? You realize it was easy to read? I'm not sure if it's easy to read. It just was more pleasant to my eyes. Maybe you could say it's easier to read. I'm not really sure. All I know is I just liked it more. I can't tell you why I liked it more. I can tell you no, re I can tell you no reasons why I liked it more. I can just tell you that I liked it more, and that's it. Like, that's it. That's it. I don't know why. So easy to read. I Maybe more pleasant to read for me is probably the better answer. Like that's one of those things that I, I don't – exposure – it's literally exposure therapy. It's not a matter of taste. It's, just, it's not a matter of taste. All I know is that I thought it was ugly looking, and now I think it's more prettier looking. I'm not even making a statement about easiness to read. Excited to hear your opinion on single letter variables soon? I will talk about Go and why the Go's greatest mistake is single letter variable. Boom. Going in. We're going to Twitter. Go Lang's greatest mistake 
is normalization of single letter variables. Boom. Posted it. Posted it. My thoughts. Exactly. Transplant. Right onto here. Okay? 100% agreed. It is like, it's literally the worst possible thing. It is awful. Okay. Skill, skill issue? All right. In my experience, few people program like this. You're right. I would not have programmed like this. I think I'm starting to see the value of this, meaning that you have a generic list structure, and then you invert it and make the node define the next one, and then you use the generic list, list structure to add things. I think I'm starting to see this, and obviously you would change value from int. Like this would be the code you write to interact with the list thing, right? Uh, the prime gen, can your dyslexia read this easily? I wouldn't expect that for real. I does, for whatever reason, it does not bother me. Right? So now I see the value. For whatever reason, now I actually see the value of this type of writing. I didn't at first because it was confusing to me, but now I see it. Again, this is one of those things where I feel like if you... If you're unfamiliar with a with a method, you find it to be upsetting. But if you're familiar with a method, it becomes nicer. I'm not saying it's better. You know, I'm not even sure if people actually think it's better, but I understand why this could be considered better. At least better than I did before. <laughs> Suck it. Even more, an ace. By the way, can you not call yourself an ace, okay? What are you, a fucking fighter pilot? Uh, sorry for cursing. That's just how I feel, okay? Uh, would be uh, able to tell you that. Decide, let's see, depending on the libc and kernel, it might not make much sense to check malloc failures, because even in the case that the system has run out of memory, an unlikely situation to begin with, malloc wouldn't fail, depending on the example of the overcommit policy on Linux. Instead, the process would be killed once you try to use the memory, so you might as well skip those checks and let the system handle those situations, thus simplifying the code substantially. And and actually, this is significant simplification of what Linux does. I placed the generic node structure at the beginning of the custom node precisely to avoid explaining the container of macro that, although beautiful, is not necessary to drive the point home. In the real world, the structure could be in another position. For example, if you consider it a mix-in of two objects, like the list and device, for more information on that post, do this. I don't know what the container of thing is. I'm not going to look at the container of. I don't even know what's happening here. All right, so we got another one of these. Uh, let's skip it. Let's just go to the conclusion. We can't watch more of this. Let's go to the conclusion. I could go on and on with the different examples, and perhaps I will add a few more later on, but hopefully this is, let's see, I have substantiated my claim that the top 10% of C programmers do write code in a significantly different way than the rest. A lot of people scoff at the idea of a 10x programmer, but when it comes to knowledge of C, it's certainly possible that the top programmers do have at least 10 times the knowledge of the bottom programmers, and possibly much more. All right, so I buy this basic conclusion, but I will say one thing right here. The reason why I would argue against this isn't that this is like the considered the way to go, blah, 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 blah. It's that it's error prone. You have to keep these things in lockstep. That's my more big, my big problem with this kind of stuff. And that's why people claim Rust is so much better, is that it feels better. That's one thing I really like about Zig. So with Zig, you can say defer. Right, so Zig has defer in it. So you can literally say here, let's go like this. Uh, Zig uh, memory allocation example. And for me, it's just like, this is kind of like the safer close quote unquote way to go, right? So right here, we allocate a new 100 bytes of U8, right? And then we free it. But this free doesn't happen until the end. And so wherever you allocate, you also defer free. And so like this right here seems like this is the superior way to do it because you don't, you're not jumping around. And again, you could also say that you could forget to uh, defer, allocate, free it. And that's, that's fair. That is still, it's still an error prone way to approach things, but it's less error prone. It's less error prone. You can say you can write macros in uh, C. I'm sure you can, but I, I'm not completely convinced that C, that Zig isn't for me, when I look at these things, I just I feel like it's more error prone. I I, I, I believe. Okay, my two the two people in here that were very into C, can we at least agree, Doozy, that it is more error prone than having something do it for you? Macro uh, macro meta programming in C is highly frowned upon. That's my worry. So low level learning, yes, I can agree with that. I'm I'm not trying to say it's. I'm trying to say that it's it's easier. It's e This seems easier to get correct than this does. 
because I have a branch here, and I have a branch that needs to go somewhere, and then this somewhere has to do the cleaning up. So for me, this is this this feels harder to get correct, and so that's why, like in my head, I prefer the zig style, and this is why I think a lot of these arguments come up is that it's just simply easier. Um, and so I'm not, you know. That's kind of where I come come up with these things. It's like, yeah, you're right. So this article, well, the article's fundamental point is that it's, it's a C skill issue that's really going on here. And that, that most people are right here when they say C is not that great. And the few people that are are apparently not confident enough that they say they are great. This guy does not index here. This guy has a straight line, straight AF, erect, perfect line, right down the middle, 45 degrees. But <coughs> at the end of the day, I... The problem is, is that the skill issues are more accidentally skill issued. No matter how smart you are, as a person who's been programming for 20 years, I have goofed it up many times, no matter how smart I am. Dude, I have programmed memory leaks in JavaScript, okay? I'm good at this, okay? In a language that's supposedly able to protect me from me, I have goofed up. I have programmed memory leaks in Rust, okay? On accident, because I'm bad. I'm bad, okay? So it's just like, if you're trying to say why C is actually still completely fine and it's just people that are dumb at it, I don't think you've sold me on that argument. You have sold me that I do completely uh, like not understand C as much, right? I think that's one thing that I can say for sure is my C ability is definitely lower, right? That's fine. Uh, you can write your own allocator to track all of this. You just use uh, and just use an arena and not worry about freeing memory. I mean, that's super interesting, by the way. Brother, I leak memory in real life. I know, for real. So, yeah, skill issues? Yes, absolutely. I'm just not convinced. We have literally decades of empirical evidence that people aren't good at safe C, C++, as they think they are. <laughs> yes, this is true. But, I mean, that's why we, we create things like the sanitizer and all that, the show you where you've goofed up. Greg, you're absolutely right on that. But again, I, I still think I, I do want to shout this out one more time. I really do think Zig is a super interesting language. If I was not in a go, like a learn go and use go as much as I can phase, I think I would actually be in a Zig phase right now. I know people, everyone wants me to do Elixir. Brazil mentioned. But right now, I really do feel like I would, I would be in a C. A C. I, I think I could be in a Zig world. I think I could be in a Z world. Z world, Zig world. Sorry. Isn't Go uh, more ready uh, than Zig, though? Yeah, of course Go is more ready than Zig. Go had the power of Google behind it for like a decade. And Zig is Andrew Kelly just shitting out code at a high rate that's surprisingly good. Your classes aren't taught in C, aren't they? Yeah, I, I didn't get taught C. I, I had one class in C. I want to try Odin. I, uh, Odin would be fun, too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. F. 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 We're coming back. We, 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 we coming back. We coming back. We coming back. We're back. We're so back. We're back. We're back. We're so back. We are so back. We are so back. We're back. Everybody, I just had a little bit of an oopsie-daisy. Little oopsie-daisy. Hey, the name is we're so back again. We're so back.